Okay, so you might want to introduce yourself just so somebody knows you're a person that we know. And we just are going to uh, talk about stuff. Perfect. Like Great. So I'll just start out. Um, my name is Rochelle Schessler Lynn, and I am the director of Workplace in Minneapolis for Gensler. And I primarily lead the design process with our clients and our designers. Um, Gensler is a global architecture and design firm that supports clients in work, financial services, consumer goods, developer, professional services, lifestyle, community, health, and healthcare, sciences, and senior living, among many other things that we do. I am also one of the regional resilience leaders that are focused on how Gensler will meet our goals to have all of our projects uh, carbon neutral by the year 2030. So it's a pretty bold, um, pretty bold action that we are taking, and uh, and we're trying to, um, you know, make progress every day on how to do that. So being at Gensler, you probably talk with a lot of your colleagues across the firm. So what have you seen about what clients are talking about in terms of? coming back to the office? Do they come back to the office? Is it hybrid? Is it what, you know, what kinds of things are you hearing from them? So, um, yeah, I've got a couple of thoughts here that, okay. that I want to share. It's, you know, um, first and foremost, I think that the human connection and the desire to be together is driving the recovery and reminding us of the true impact of real estate. Um, and, and some of the research that we have done over the past, you know, starting in 2020, we did a lot of research in 2020. We are now have new research that's in 2021. So the research that we've conducted um, throughout the pandemic has continued to evolve. Uh, the, the successful organizations will empower people with choice, creating more ways to connect and prioritizing agility. Uh, the employee experiences and engagement will transform the culture of the organization. So as we're going through this, uh, one of the primary strategies that we have looked at is um, cho choice and autonomy. So for instance, some people will choose to work in the office five days a week. Others will work only two days a week um, in the summer, perhaps if they have kids. You know, so they might be a five day person, but in the summer they're going to have to, you know, spend more time at home. Uh, some of the people may go to the office five days per month <laughs> and some others might be there five days a year. So there's just, we just have to be nimble enough and uh, flexible enough to let people make their choice at this point in time, you know, and, and as this just as we were talking a minute ago, where uh, you know, three months ago, we wouldn't have thought that all of a sudden we would be at the vaccination point that you know the governor wanted, um, and that we can just walk walk around if we're vaccinated without a mask on, and we might all be able to go back to work at the same time. <laughs> it's just so things are moving fast, but I think that we still have to be paying attention to the people that have. Um, that need the flexibility the most. Right. And don't you think that, <clears throat> I would think that them coming back and saying, oh, I need this may change as they move into whatever getting back means to them. Right. Yeah, yes. And so um, so the, the other part of this is, you know, as we see people coming back to the office and how quickly they're going to adapt to being back in the office, um, the conversations that we've had with our clients have indicated that they are providing surveys to understand how their employee uh, wants to work. And we have asked questions to the leaders related to how they will create a flexible workplace that supports productivity and choice. So, um, so how will that attract and retain the best talent is the question. Uh, and how do we create an ecosystem of innovation in the work environment? Um, and how has the pandemic changed our workplace culture? So from a survey that we took, 74% um, of the people said, 74% um, uh, 
of the people are what they miss the most about the office. 55% um, say collaborating with others, others is harder at home. 51% say staying up to date on what others are working on is harder at home as well. And so then from that, we looked at another survey. So this survey asked the question, how many days would you prefer to work from the office versus at home? So full-time in the office is 29% at home, one to two days a week, 28% uh, at home, three to four days a week, 24% uh, at home, and then full-time at home was 19%. So basically what this is telling us is that 52% of the employees prefer a hybrid model. Um, and that, that means choice in terms of what their hybrid is? Yes, yep, whether they're working at home, whether they're working uh, in some other remote place or if they're working in the office. So, so it's still, you know, and this is, um, this probably will change as people do go back to the office. You know, it's like it's speculation until until you actually see what what they what the people actually end up doing. <laughs> what their habits become and how willing they are and yeah, exactly. How, how does it? So, do you hear your clients talking about um, needing to make? changes to their space or their furniture or their you know layouts in terms of what people are going to be comfortable with yep we have heard um, we have heard from a few clients and we have tested out a couple of things on um, a few projects just to see how you know so we're we have engaged with some clients where we're doing kind of a pilot phase and so they've got the regular office that's all workstations and everything like that. And then this, the pilot project is, you know, introducing more collaborative spaces and to see if that, uh, if that catches on, you know, and, um, and so that one is kind of just in a pilot phase at this point. Um, we don't have many results yet because people aren't in the office. So as a pilot, it's, it's, uh, it's <laughs> nobody there, so, <laughs> so we'll find out when they go back Very to the new. <laughs> yes, exactly. But um, but I do think that you know some of the other things like this hybrid, the you know the the potential of having of going hybrid, and you know it's not home or office, it's both. You know, and the flexibility fosters the productivity. Uh, we will see more collaboration spaces for teams to work together in the office. Um, technology is also an important component for um, for the team in the hybrid model, because uh, what we found is, according to if there's 50% of the people that are in the office, that means there's 50% more or less that are at home. And so you still want to be accommodating to those that are in the office with those that are at home. And so a lot of uh, integration of technology throughout the space is is really needed mm -hmm. and the collaboration spaces <clears throat> are also you know most people are likely to be going back to the office because they are going to be working with their teams and so it's going to be in a collaborative space and it may be that there's some you know desks in the space you know if people are going to you know change things around but that, you know, you would do your heads down work maybe on the days that you're not in the office and you'd get all your, you know, things that you're, if you're writing or if you're doing billing or whatever it is that you might be doing, that you could do those things at home and you'd go to the office primarily for the collaboration. So, you know, um, so we, we want to make sure that the technology is there to make sure that everybody is included. So it's kind of an inclusive um, strategy as well. And, you know, so the flexibility of the furniture solutions is also another consideration. Make it like this isn't just about workstations. This is like the collaboration spaces. And instead of building a wall, a sheetrock wall, you mobile pieces that can, you know, you can still have some privacy, but it's not a real wall and you can you can move it around. So so we're, you know, 
talking a lot about that uh, so as a solution. Um, being nimble and flexible uh, allows people to create the collaboration spaces they find most successful. Um, more, cho more choices in the within the workspace are also important. And you know, uh, just as we've been talking about um, these uh, uh, ancillary rooms and spaces, you know, we've introduced the wellness rooms and focus rooms and huddle spaces, all of which are still important today. And then adding in uh, learning spaces, outdoor space, um, and convening space where are some of the uh, additional typologies. So even though we live here in Minnesota, you know, we've noticed that downtown, we have quite a few of the towers had done their amenity uh, um, project prior to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And those that did that, I think that's, um, I think it'll encourage others, hopefully that have uh, buildings that can accommodate outdoor space yes. to, to try to do that because um, because I think that's another way for people just to get out of if you're not if you get anxiety and you need to go out, you can hopefully find a nice outdoor space. Isn't it so, interesting uh, that that and is then and then uh, in Minnesota too. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And and I think uh, you know, when we, um, the city of, city of Minneapolis um, public service building that was built, you know, that was one of the first projects that I have worked on where every floor of the building has a terrace. Oh, really? Small, it's very small. I mean, it's like yeah. a 10 by 10 terrace, but it's a terrace and you can't smoke out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a smoking spot. <laughs> yeah, it's not the smoking spot, but it is a place where you can go out and if you um, if you want to just get a breath of fresh air and go back to your seat or you had a bad call or a good call or whatever it is that you have another place to go. So I think the outdoor spaces as well as access to daylight and views are a primary strategy for the health and well-being of the people that work in these buildings. And, and uh, that, um, that has to become front and center as well to get the employees closer to the windows. Um, it's going to be interesting, isn't well. it? I would think, you know, if you think about your clientele, how many ever picked their space based on how much daylight they had exactly? Right. How that's going to become a priority. So that might affect how buildings are designed. Yes. As we move forward. Right. Exactly. I think, you know, um, I think it will change the way that people think about this when you're when you're building a new building, uh, like in de developments and things like that. That you know, I think that um, that is possible, and you know, and the daylighting and uh, having daylight is just it's an easy thing to do, um, <laughs> but you can't put offices and conference rooms and ring the whole building anymore. If you, you know, for just 10 people to be getting the access to daylight and views. And so we just have to really think about that from regardless of, you know, the pandemic and everything else, but it's just that that strategy in, in many ways, I think needs to flip and, um, and allow the people that are working in board today and giving them more opportunities for um, for day for daylight, and that doesn't mean that you can't put a conference room on the glass, you know. But I mean, it's just more of, you know, thinking about how people that um, work in private offices and how much time do they actually spend in their office during the day. So, do you hear companies thinking that they may not need as much space since that everybody's going to be there all the time? Yeah. They, I have, and um, I don't know. Well, for one thing, on this, uh, the, all the talk about the collaboration spaces, mm -hmm. you know, could in fact change the dynamic and the the quantity of desks that you would think that we currently have in a lot of offices. I think it's a one to one ratio. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a desk. There's some organizations that have set it up so that uh, it might be a shared desk, you know, if, if it's just a touchdown um, 
kind of situation. So, uh, so there's a variety of way of how a variety of ways of how people go about that. Um, so, um, when we looked at this, uh, um, we looked at. Let me see here. Supporting the choice to work from anywhere creates new opportunities to think about how the office and office should work for individuals and teams. The space solutions for the future need support both on-site and remote individual teams. And the impact to real estate can be reduced by as much a, as 20 to 50%, depending on the industry, work style, and new learned behaviors and management approaches. So then, um, then we took a look at the kind of the ratios proportionally in the office. So 75 to 80% of the space is multifunctional, collaborative, and social spaces to both connect and work. And then 20 to 25% of the space is for focus, quiet desk workspace. And then we add in the amenities like, um, you know, pantries for nourishment and wellness and larger social gathering to round it out. So it kind of depends on, um, you know, we don't have, we have talked to a lot of clients, but we still don't necessarily know the clients that have gone back in, we've gotten this data from. The, the clients that haven't been back in the office yet uh, maybe it's going to be, maybe it is going to be more people going into the office than what we might anticipate now that we're in this particular space. And Minis I mean, I think in Minnesota, just because um, it sounds like we've been better at, you know, taking care of our, our health and well-being related to COVID. So I think that's one thing for us to keep in mind, you know. And this whole thing is just going to continue to evolve. Right. You know, even in our own office, we're talking about how, how we would want to change it to make it more collaborative, uh, yeah. even though we have collaborative spaces, but we yeah. also have, you know, a, we have a row, you know, rows of workstations at the same time. You know, is there a better way that we could utilize some of the space that we have um, in our office differently? Isn't that interesting how, you know, because I think of your office as fairly open concept. It's it's and, wide open concept, yeah. 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 <laughs> Hi, where are you? Yes, there you are. Um, so it's just interesting to hear that you also have to reevaluate yeah. space. It isn't just what we did before works and we're all going to be comfortable coming back to it. Um, right. And do you, you know, Excuse me, I think that, um, do you find that senior management of companies are a little nervous? Because I would think they go, no, we need a plan and we need one plan and this is the plan. And, or do you find them working really hard to, to be flexible and understand what flexibility means? Yeah, I think, um... I, did, I don't remember the organization and I probably wouldn't say it anyway if I could think of it, but, you know, I was um, reading, actually, I was talking to somebody and it was, it was a, an interesting conversation because I would have thought that there would be a lot more flexibility there, but they, they are still in a mindset of butts and seats is the only way that you can uh, show your productivity. Oh. And so I think that, I don't know what percentage there is of companies like that, you know, but that they are eager to get people back into the office, but the primary reason isn't necessarily for them to then have flexibility and be working hybrid and all these other things. I think that it's still, uh, managers that, um, are maybe a bit old school that, want to see their people at their desk every day, you know? And so the proportion of that, and, and I think if people push back, you know, they can try that, but when the people push back and say, no, I have, I wanna work at home for two days a week or three days a week or whatever it is, or they wanna work at home permanently, 
mm-hmm. that they're going to have to deal with that or um, or they might be losing really great talent. Right. Yes, it's interesting. And it would inter- be interesting hearing you comment on that. I feel like we are in a time <clears throat> But what the employee needs and wants is going to be more important than ever before. Because, well, I don't know if you've seen uh, articles lately that are saying, you know, as we go back to the office, um, the employee turnover, I don't know what, what, what the, was predicted for turnover, but if you can find a job, a new job, or a, if you were anxious to leave a year and a half ago anyway, you know, it's like, What is that going to look like, you know, over the course of this next, you know, six months or so as people start going back to work? The thing that I've heard is that it's, we just had the next wave of people coming back right after Memorial Day. The next one will be after 4th of July. And then the last one will be September Labor Day, you know, after Labor Day. So, so that's kind of an interesting thing too. So it's like, if people are out, um, if this turns out to be a, an opportunity for people to move around again. Um, it'll be kind of interesting. Yeah, it's kind of like, we don't know. How right. is, we don't really know. Yeah, <laughs> Here's exactly. your answer. Here's yeah. the options, but we don't know about any of them because human behavior is so bizarre at times. Yeah. And after being at home all this time, and finally getting used to it or trying to deal with what that is, the idea that you're, oh, I'm gonna change my mindset again and figure out what the next wave is in terms of how I wanna work, do I wanna work? I mean, because workers are used to someone telling you, hi, this is a nine to five office, this is when you come, this is when you leave. And now it's gonna be, hi, what would you like? <laughs> right, right, exactly. And, <clears throat> and to just, um be able to deal with it. It's kind of like, you know, you, you get into this groove of um, like through the pr- pandemic, we would go outside and, you know, I just bought a really heavy winter coat and, you know, and I said, we're going on a walk every day. Well, we skipped a few days in February. That was the only, the yeah. only one, <laughs> and, but it was like, well, what if I want to leave the office at you know, three or four in the afternoon and so that I can go have a nice walk and then work, you know, into the evening if I want to, um, to make up for the, you know, the work that I didn't, didn't do while I was on my walk, which Mm -hmm. your walk is, you know, or any sort of fitness is something that is also really important to your health and well-being, you know, and, um, and, and getting out to nature and things like that. It's just, um, I think really important. And even as we go back to the office, there'll probably still continue to be exa- anxiety around, you know, who's coming in and are they really, you know, vaccinated or not vaccinated or whatever, you know, so, so right. it's, you know, I mean, there's, there's just new things like we can say, we know who, we know the people around us, Um and where where they're at but you know then there's other people and it's just you know we're gonna have to work through all that well and i think the other thing as you know because i i we do art work which has always been one of those how do you prove productivity even though there are studies and there are some research it's so one of those loosey goosey things huh a really yeah. pretty picture is going to help produce the productivity and how are we going to actually do that? And there's going to be more of that. It's like the walk outside. It's, mm-hmm. it's health, it's wellness, but it's also productivity. And yeah. it's all those things that I think we're have to get used to that aren't so concrete. <laughs> right. But they actually are really, really important to how we perform as uh, people in the workplace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, I agree. I love the idea of the heavy coat and just going out and doing it and go, be brave if you're coming with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like some of, sometimes it was, it was cold, but you know, I was just like, nope, we're going to, we're just going to trudge our way through it. So. Yes. I heard a interview with the um, mayor of Madison, Wisconsin, which I thought was fascinating. You know, somebody 
who was from somewhere warm was going, oh my gosh, how can you live through this? Blah, blah, blah. You know how we all hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said, which I thought was so smart, she said, there is no such thing as bad weather. There's just bad clothes. Exactly. <laughs> I thought that is so true. If you're dressed yeah. right, nothing weather-wise is going to intimidate you. Yeah, exactly. So just uh, kind of one um, final overarching question is, what advice would you give to your clients as they try to figure out moving forward? Well, first off, I would say that um, I think it's important to be patient as people come into the office and acclimate again with their, with their colleagues and, you know, and all of that. I think that we have to remain flexible um, and we have to uh, be compassionate enough to, uh, to know when somebody really needs uh, support mm -hmm. um, and, and, uh, and, and make that happen. So I think that for the very beginning of how people go back into the office, I think it's important that we just recognize that some people are going to come in and they're going to be, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. You know, I'm really ready to be here. There's going to be others that are going to dip their toe in it and they're going to try it. And, you know, and, uh, and there may be others that, you know, wait it out and, you know, and won't come back right away. And I think all of those require leaders and, you know, coworkers to be cognizant of that and to, you know, if you notice that somebody is, um, that somebody's not doing very well, that, you know, you, you recognize it. And if they need help or whatever, you know, to just acknowledge it. So, so I know that's not really, you know, as far as how the furniture is arranged and everything else, but I think that there's another component to this of what is it really going to be like on the day that you walk into the office? And you're looking around and if they let us go back and there's 20 people there that day, what is your, what's your first reaction to it, you know, from just a, you know, just from being a human being, you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think the whole mental health component is going to be really interesting and one that uh, companies are going to have to pay attention to because this may end up being high stress for some of the comeback who's been gone this long and when they're trying to figure out, am I going to be valued as an employee if you don't see me every day? You know, all the things that will come up. So I think you're right that you have to pay attention mm -hmm. and offer support or yeah. have a vehicle as a part of your company that says, and I don't mean like a car, but a way of giving support or helping them go in a direction or find the support that they need. Right. Like, you know, yeah, connecting them with the services and and all of that. I think I think that's true. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I think that's, it's really important, I think, to just make sure that people know that they're being supported. So for you, what was the uh, most challenging thing of actually working from home full time? Uh, well, it was interesting. It is interesting. Um, I feel like it was harder. Well, for, for a while, I don't know when this happened for me, but, you know, in the early COVID time, you know, you were still calling people and, you know, having virtual coffee or, you know, just having, having conversations. And then I don't know when it flipped, but it was like all of a sudden, you know, I would try to re you'd reach out to people, you know, but it was like everybody was then busy, busy, busy. And so there wasn't as much uh, maybe connecting. Mm -hmm. And so and then now it feels like, you know, we can now connect again, you know, because it's been a long time since you and I have talked to each other and we did talk. I know we mm -hmm. talked right. through COVID and and uh, and then all of a sudden I was like, wow, I didn't really, I just kind of put my head down and tried to figure things out and work on some projects. And, you know, and I think that's what a lot of people did. Um, 
as it got into the kind of winter months. Well, it was interesting talking about your wet, your winter coat <laughs> is I had one networking group where we met outside 830 Friday mornings once a month, the whole time, except for one meeting. Wow. They had a fire pit meteor as it was, but we figured if we dress correctly, <clears throat> you know, it, we could actually be outside and be with other people. And I have to tell you, as much as I thought, what am I doing? It brought a degree of sanity, normalcy, you know, the actually interaction of how do I interact with someone when they're really there physically in front of me. So it, I go, wow, that was really good practice. I mean, all the way around. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, I go, yeah. Oh, I didn't know there were that many of us. And we showed up. I thought that was the other thing. I mean, there's quite a few in the group. And I thought, well, we must all think that this is that part of that wellness, healthy productivity is it just um, felt different when you were with people. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, a great, yeah. great story. <laughs> yeah, I go, wow, was I dumb or just thinking that was kind of an interesting thing to do? I don't know. No, I so anything good. else you'd like to share with us or? Um, I guess the only, you know, parting words, I guess, besides the health and well-being piece is, you know, the future of work will continue to evolve day by day. Flexibility in the workplace environments and the need to be inclusive with those working from home will require patience for all of us as we return to work. Well said. Well said. Those are all important. <laughs>